Namo myoho renge kyo, namo myoho renge kyo, namo myoho renge kyo. Hello friends, I hope this finds you in good health and secure. Um, yeah, the world's very violent, dangerous place right now. Lower worlds, right? Hell, hunger, animality, anger everywhere. And as we can certainly see, anger doesn't need any reasoning. In fact, it's rather the absence of reasoning. It's completely visceral. I'm not even sure if emotional. I don't think anger is emotional. I think it may bring emotions to the fore and those help feed the anger. But anger, the world of anger, is just totally unreasonable. Um... And Buddhism is all about reason, yeah? Reason as in the thinking, logical, analytical mind. Not everyone chooses to use that part of the mind, just as not everyone knows about the Buddha mind, yeah? But it is there. All right. We begin... Yet another chapter today, chapter 8. Uh, the 500 disciples received predictions of Anuttara Samyak Sambodai. So, uh, again, the number 500, don't confuse us with the, uh, the senior disciples and so called Arhats receiving, uh, 500 of them receiving predictions. Now we're reaching down deeper into the broader audience uh, of this assembly. Right, the fourfold assembly, bhikshus, bhikshuni, zupasaka, zupasikas. And he's going to select 500 of them, but they just stand in for all of them, yes. And he's going to speak specifically uh, at the moment to Purna. Now, you've already heard me say it's, it seems odd, but I guess we have to have some compassion for these folks in the assembly because they have been studying some for many decades, under the tutelage of uh, either senior disciples or Shakyamuni himself. But they have all settled comfortably into their idea that they're never going to attain Buddhahood, that that's something reserved for many future lifetimes after this one's over, the afterlife. But that's not Buddhism. That's a leftover from cultural traditions and cultural uh, impregnation from uh, their languages and uh, their communications. It just, they grew up, if you will, into this magical, mystical mind. And uh, even though they study Buddhism and they hear it all and they become very efficient and uh, um, at memorizing all the sermons and so forth, they may be a little preoccupied with memorizing and repeating instead of seeking the meaning in the words they're memorizing. Yeah? It's just like when you learned all your times di tables, division tables in mathematics, and then when your teacher asks you to think about what that meant, you, know, you just know the answer. <laughs> you just regurgitate it. Hmm? But there's a reason things work the way they, they work. There's a reason why we have this order of language. It's the language didn't come first. The thinking did. And then we created this abstract way of blah, 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 and somehow communicating those ideas to one another. But that language isn't the idea. The idea is beneath the language. You have to think about what is being communicated. Hmm? So now the whole assembly has already heard, holy crap, everything we've been doing has been missing the mark. We haven't really been going the full, the full practice. So now, you know, to the senior monks and so forth, they're getting it. They're like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. This is astounding. But now as you go down the ladder to others who are practicing maybe not as long or not as profoundly, not as v well versed. 
there's a they have a lot of doubts. Well, I think I understand what you're saying, but do I qualify? Yes, we all qualify. But so this chapter is going to try to round out and give predictions to these monks of what they should already know, especially Purna, right? So let's get into it. At that time, Purna, son of Maitrayani, having heard the Buddha teach in such wise, tactful, and opportune fashion, and having heard the prediction of the great disciples' perfect enlightenment, Anuttara Samyak Sambodai, having moreover heard the stories of their former destinies, and also having heard of the sovereign, transcendent powers of the Buddhas, having thus received such an unexcelled teaching, his heart was purified and in ecstasy. Wow, this is, this is potential right now. Immediately he rose from his seat, went before the Buddha, this is Purna now, right? prostrated himself at his feet, then withdrew to one side, gazing upon his honored countenance without for a moment turning away his eyes and reflecting thus. So now we're in Purna's mind. Wonderful is the world honored one. Yeah, I should say so. Rare are his doings according to the many kinds of earthly dispositions. By tactful wisdom, he teaches the law to and lifts all beings out of every condition to let them get rid of selfish attachment. Now, of course, that includes you, Purna. No words of ours can declare the Buddha's merits. Only the Buddha, the world-honored one, is able to know the natural inclinations of our inmost hearts. Thereupon the Buddha addressed the fourfold assembly. He's not even looking at Purna now. He sees him, but he's... He's focused on the entire assembly, yeah? Do you see this Purna, son of Maitrayani? I have always styled him the very first among all the teachers of the law and constantly praised his varied merits. Now, if I were Purna, I'd be blushing, right? He has been zealous in guarding and helping to proclaim my law. Among the four groups, he has been able to display the, and teach it with great success and delight to them. Perfectly interpreting the right Dharma law of the Buddha, he has greatly benefited his fellow followers of Brahma conduct. Aside from the Tathagata, no one is able to equal the lucidity of his discourse. See, he knows it so well. But does he understand it? Do not think that it is only my law which Purna is able to guard and help to proclaim. He also, under ninety codas of Buddhas in the past, guarded and helped to proclaim the right Dharma law of the Buddhas. And again, this is that time slippage thing, right? He's basically saying Purna is not a singular entity with these capacities. This capacity is universal and timeless, but we're seeing it instantiated and expressed as Purna. But we all have Purna. Purna is a capacity. It's a karmic amalgam of potential instantiating. See, I don't think a lot of people talk about this, and therefore this is greatly missing from our understanding of Buddhism. All of these personages are aspects we all have. If all of us are innately capable of awakening our Buddha facility of mind, then doesn't it make complete sense that all of these other aspects of being are also available to us? in the right circumstances and conditions and, and influences, couldn't you become a thief? And by the same token, 
with the right influences and right practices and right life conditions, right being not right in the grand sense, capital R right, but correct in that they, you could be influenced to become a great leader, a Buddha. See, it's really that simple. If you, every day, with the depth of conviction, use your mandala, chant, and recite to your stupa, your butsudan, to open your gohonzon mind and your Buddha eye, that is training, that is influence, that is taking the 3,000 realms in a single thought moment and aligning them so that you too could course your life in the world as a human being, a bodhisattva, with the Buddha mind. All of these, see, it's a very experiential, witnessing, observing reality practice. It's not mystical. It's simply using all of the facilities that you and I have in this Saha world and directing them toward Buddhaness. Living your life to the full. Not to the full as the best cat burglar in the world to the full as to the best human in the world the best mind in the world the most loving compassionate being of life ultimately the most rewarding yeah He also, under 90 codas of Buddhas in the past, guarded and helped to proclaim the right Dharma law of the Buddhas. It's a repetition, but understand what that means. Among those teachers of the law, he was always uh, also the foremost. See, Purna is that, that aspect of all of us that doesn't just want to do something. But if we're going to do it, by goodness, we're going to do it to its utmost. Yeah? See the conviction? The, uh, what was the word he used recently? The zeal? The single-mindedness? It's constantly in here. It's your Ichinen. Hmm? It's your Taiji. Using the Chi, the life energy of yourself... To achieve the highest, the most, the most fulfilled expression of what you are being. And in regard to the law of emptiness taught by the Buddhas, he was clear-minded and penetrating. He attained the four degrees of unhindered wisdom. He has ever been able to teach the law with judgment and in purity, without doubt and perplexity, perfect and transcendent bodhisattva powers. He maintained Brahma conduct to the end of his life. Wait a minute, he's right here. Yes, but we're talking about sentient life in general. Through, witness through, in this case, Purna. All the people of those Buddha periods spoke of him as the true disciples, the true Sravaka, the greatest student. The greatest student is the one who can turn around and, with meaning, teach. And as I always say, what is teaching is something that we do with ourselves. We don't learn we don't teach to others. We share with others. But what we share with others is what we have taught ourselves through our zeal, through our understanding and accepting meaning from everything in life. We teach ourselves. Right? Learning sounds like such a passive activity. 
But learning is the process of taking in information so that we can teach ourselves through our own insight. Shakyamuni knew this to the core. That's why he understands that Buddhism is something that we practice for ourselves, to ourselves, with ourselves, that no one can do it for us. No matter how much I tell you about what the meaning is of this sutra, you have to take that information and go and understand for yourself through your own matrix of sentient mind, I get it. And when you get it, it's not because of me, it's because of you. I'm just trying to help it along, bodhisattva. That's bodhisattva work. Giving you as many turns and facets and so that you get your own renge, so you can awaken your Buddha nature, yeah? Thus Purna, by such tactfulness, has benefited innumerable hundreds and thousands of beings and converted innumerable asamkaya of people to achieve perfect enlightenment. For the sake of purifying his Buddha land, there it is, he has constantly done a Buddha's work and instructed the living. Now, that, those last two sentences are very dense, but if you understand how I've been going through this, it should make perfect sense to you. On the one hand, Purna is a facility we all have to excel for ourselves, yes? And Purna, through tactfulness, because once he understands, he's able to discuss it with others, right? So... He's benefited innumerable beings because it's not just this Purna now in the audience. It's Purna-ness. It's the suchness that Purna represents throughout time. So how many people's lives has he touched this way? Yeah? So here he goes uh, with this uh, um, uh, achievement of perfect enlightenment for all these people for the sake of purifying his Buddha land. Your Buddha land, my Buddha land, all of us have our own perception of the cosmos, all the way down to the smallest pebble on the seashore. We observe, experience, and know our epistemology is personal. We share an awful lot with everyone that we meet, that we know, but we all share it through our own filters of experience, yeah? This should be obvious by now, right? So, for the sake of his, purifying his Buddha land, which includes his environment, yeah? He has constantly done a Buddha's work and instructed the living. But that Buddha's work is Bodhisattva in the Saha world, right? So there's that, that weird kind of duality. Where as humans instantiated in this cosmos, our performative reality is on the one hand observation of this amazing environment, which isn't just your house or your yard or, or the mountains. It's all of it, including the stars and galaxies we can't even see. That's the environment that you are temporarily housed in a human body with. And our whole purpose for being here as a human with a sentient mind and this silly thing we call language is to wake up everyone around us to that truth. That's bodhisattva. And that bodhisattva-ness is the communicator of Tathagata, of look at this, experience this. Oh no, you can. That's the Buddha's work, right? The, the awakening of Tathagata, the true nature of all phenomena. Once again, it's just tactful means saying the same thing. Follow? Bhikshus, bhikshunis, upasakas, and upasikas, Purna also was the foremost among the teachers of the law under the seven Buddhas. 
Uh, let's see, seven Buddhas is a uh, reference to... The seven Buddhas are Vipassin, uh, Shikin, Vishvambu, uh, Kraku, Chanda, Kanakamuni, Kashyapa, and Shakyamuni. So these historically throughout all of the dialogues and lectures, the sutras are particular characters, instantiations, if you will, of the Tathagata, yeah? And now in is again the foremost among the teachers of the law under me. So this capacity to be the foremost teacher has, is also timeless. But in this particular time with me, Shakyamuni Buddha, Purna represents that facility of life. Hmm? Among the teachers of the law under future Buddhas, in this case, the coming 996 Buddhas after Shakyamuni, again, this refers to the breadth of teachings. You'd have to read quite a few sutras. It's a rabbit hole you might choose to go down and maybe what you need to chase down in order to receive or uh, achieve, sorry, your particular renge moment, okay? So I won't fault you for checking it out. It's not necessary at the moment, but you know, that's, that's how I've always been. If something catches my ear that sounds interesting, I'll dig. Sometimes not too deep because I get my answers right away. Other times it's so fascinating I have to really dig down in there only to find that, oh, yeah, I knew that. doesn't matter, though. It, the exercise is important, yeah? And it brings with it new insights, new ways of communicating to others, right? The uh, what, what we would term in this book anyway, uh, and previous books, the... Um, the dharanis, the skillful means, the expedient devices that you develop for your style of disseminating the truth. Hmm? He will also be the foremost and will guard and help proclaim the Buddha's law. Also, in the future, he will guard and help to proclaim the law of the incalculable infinite Buddhas, instructing and benefit innumerable living beings to cause them to achieve perfect enlightenment. For the sake of purifying his Buddha land, he will ever diligently and zealously <laughs> instruct the living, gradually fulfilling the Bodhisattva course after infinite Asamkaya Kalpas. In that land, he will attain perfect enlightenment and his title will be Radiance of the Law Tathagata or the embodiment of the Tathagata named Radiance of the Law. Worthy of praise, all wise, perfectly enlightened in conduct, well departed, understander of the world, peerless leader, controller, teacher of universal realms of influence and in men, Buddha, world honored one. That Buddha will make his Buddha land of a 3,000 great thousand fold universe of worlds as many as the sands of the Ganges, with the precious seven jewels for its earth, its ground level at, as the palm of a hand free from hills and valleys, uh, runnels and ditches, and its midst filled with terraces of the precious, precious seven jewels. The palaces of its universal realms of influence will be situated near, nearby in the sky, where men and universal realms of influence will meet and behold each other. There will be no deluded and malicious ways, and no one womankind, for all living beings will be born transformed and have no carnal passions, no distractions whatsoever. They will attain to the great transcendent powers. Their bodies will emit rays of light. Their presence will appear anywhere at will. Their will and memory will be firm. They will be zealous and wise all golden-hued and adored, adorned with the 32 signs. All the beings in his domain will always have two articles of food, one being the food of joy in the law, the other being the food of gladness in meditation. There will be a host of infinite asamkayas and thousands of myriads of kodas of nayutas of bodhisattvas, 
who have attained the great transcendent faculties and the four degrees of unhindered wisdom, and who have excellent abilities in instructing all kinds of beings. His sravakas cannot be told by counting and calculation, and all will attain perfection in the six transcendent faculties, the three clear views, and the eight emancipations. The domain of that Buddha will be adorned with and perfected with such boundless excellences as these. His kalpa will be named Jewel Radiance and his domain named Excellent Purity. The lifetime of that Buddha will be infinite Asamkaya Kalpas and the law will remain for an eon. After the extinction of that Buddha, stupas of precious seven jewels will be erected throughout all that domain. At that time, the world-honored one desiring to proclaim this teaching over again spoke thus in verse. Bhikshus, bhikshunis, upasakas, upasikas, listen to me attentively. The way my Buddha son has walked through well-studying tactfulness is beyond conception. Knowing how all enjoy mere trifles and are afraid of the greater wisdom, the bodhisattvas therefore become shravakas or prachaka buddhas. By numberless tactful methods, they convert the various kinds of beings, saying, we are but shravakas, far removed from the Buddha way. They release innumerable beings, all completing their course, coursing, right? doings, coursing as a shravaka, coursing as a Pratyaka Buddha, coursing as a Bodhisattva. Right? All with the same aim, ultimately. But as we've read before in previous chapters, the true Bodhisattva Mahasattva, or for our purposes, the Lotus Bodhisattva, changes course depending on who he's discussing with. If he finds himself talking to some as a perennial student, then he adopts the the teaching methods of Ashravaka. Oh, I'm just like you. I'm also a student. Did you know this? Have you ever read this? What do you think about this? Others are more reclusive. Take their knowledge and hold it close. So he adopts, oh, I'm kind of a private person too. I'm like you, a Pratyaka Buddha. But ultimately expecting them, once they're on the path, to grow out of that toward Bodhisattva, right? But he lets them make that evolution themselves. If he finds somebody who's like, I wish I knew more about this so I could tell my friends and tell people, and, but I'm afraid to talk to people because I don't think I have enough mastery of, oh, well, I'm a bodhisattva like you. Let me show you how I did it. And maybe you can glean something from that for yourself. <gasps> yeah. That's what we're doing, yeah? And the, all of them ultimately have the singular goal of the one Buddha vehicle. But these are all faculties we develop, yes? And we have to be developing our awareness of where other people are at. That takes compassion. That takes true listening, yes? Moving on. They show themselves possessed of human passions and seem to hold heretical views. Thus do my disciples tactfully save all beings. Sometimes you're talking to somebody who, who's interested in developing their, their Buddha knowledge, their Buddha wisdom, but they don't know how to go about it, and they express their fears sometimes with disparaging remarks. They don't really mean it. They're just they're talking about themselves. As I've talked before many times about not taking offense, because whatever a human being says only explains their experience and their difficulties. No, even if it sounds like they're putting it on you, they're not. They're just expressing their anxiety. We live in dukkha. What do you expect? 
Mm -hmm. You may even have to kind of get down there with them for or placate that to let them know that you understand them. I get you. I get you. All those those people doing those rituals is like, who do they think they are? But have you ever thought about this? <laughs> oh, so you're with them? No, no, no. I'm just saying. What do you think? Right? You may have to join that rhetoric. Not, not join it like becoming a member of their club of the. Because remember, that's just their expression. But you can hear their expression and with compassion understand them and let themselves lead themselves out of the muck they're in. It's, I didn't say it was easy, but these are skills we gain by study, right? If I fully explained the various future transformations, beings who heard of them would be perplexed and puzzled. Now, I'm already creating that perplexing and puzzling. Yeah? Now this Purna, under thousands of codas of former Buddhas, has di diligently maintained his course and proclaimed and protected the Buddha law, which is what our goal is, yes? He has sought supreme wisdom and under the Buddhas has shown himself the superior disciple in learning and wisdom. In teaching, he has been fearless, able to cause all beings to rejoice. He has ever been tireless in aiding Buddha tasks. Having achieved the great transcendent faculties, acquired the four unhindered powers of wisdom, and known the faculties of others, keen or dull, he has always taught the pure law. Now, I, another Side note here, I've talked about this before. Um, it's really important that when we endeavor to teach others, hmm, share with others, that we don't, what, what do we call it now? Overshare? That we share so much of our own experience, personal experience, that we unknowingly put a wedge between us and the student. And this is why I restate again, when faced with teaching somebody a concept, rely on, look at the plethora of stories, parables, sayings, sentences. In the Lotus Sutra alone, hmm? let alone from the other stuff that you learn from your research and so forth. That's what threefoldlotus.com is about on the, on the course study page. All these terms and things, they're not necessarily in the Lotus Sutra, but they're discussed in the Lotus Sutra or referred to in the Lotus Sutra. All teachings of Buddhism will help you come up with your own memory of those stories, like the, um, uh, the, the, the turtle in the sandalwood log, yeah? Or the scorpion and the and the turtle. Uh, sometimes in the West, the scorpion and the frog. Whatever, it's the same story about people's natures. Yes, those stories come in really handy, and they're not specifically Buddhist, but in meaning they are. They're all teachings, right? So what I'm saying is, as far as teaching others, we we're. Again, very attached to self, so we want to talk about ourselves. Uh, sometimes that's appropriate, but 90% of the time, search in your mind for something that gave you insight, a story, a, a, a parable, a, a few sentences, a word that gave you insight, and use the teaching. This is what he's saying about Purna. This is why Purna is so excellent. He knew how to use the teachings and deliver them to different minds so that they could see the wisdom in Buddhism. If you're always talking about yourself, you're forcing your student to learn about you. And that shouldn't be the, 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 um, the leadership uh, the teaching, the, the facility with which you're 
approaching somebody to enable their enlightenment, their facility to open, their awakening of Buddha. It's not going to come through you. It's going to come through them and their self-teaching of these same concepts. Become a conveyor of Buddhism rather than a conveyor of self. You're just going to destroy that relationship. It's very, very, very important to remember. Hmm? Expounding such principles as these, he has taught thousands of codas of beings, leading them to rest in the great vehicle law. There he is. He just said it for me. And himself purified his Buddha land. Not by saying, here, help me dig this out, but by giving them opportunity to do it for themselves. They are his Buddha land. They are your Buddha land. The great they, yes? Where are we time-wise? Okay, I'm going to wrap it up here. In future, he shall also revere infinite numberless Buddhas, protect and aid in proclaiming the right Dharma law, and himself purify his Buddha land. Practice for self and others. How many times have you heard that? Nietzsche repeats that all the time, doesn't he? All right. We will continue with this chapter 8 in the next video. I dearly appreciate your participation, your listening, and your practice. Yeah. Please continue to diligently practice your Bodhisattva way. Open your Gohan's mind, Buddha eye. And in order to maximize that, maximize that experience, I made up a word. <laughs> Stay healthy, right? Take care of your health and those around you. Stay diligent. I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.